Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday from our knees. Happy birthday to you. Welcome to Arnie's birthday Zoom. Kyle Orton, he's 40 years old today. I don't, that just cannot be possible. And I'm, that's, that's coming from me. I can only, just, I can only think of what he thinks on this, but welcome to your highlight of your media career, your, the Arnie's birthday Zoom. Happy birthday to you. And uh, I'm sure it's uh, with that smiley face, it's, it's all good. I know you've got family duties to deal with here shortly and that's good as well, but what's it like to be 40? I feel it. I feel like I'm 40. I feel it in my knees and my hips. And uh, yeah, when the kids get on my uh, case a little bit, I feel it in my head every now and then. So uh, yeah, all, all's good and uh, happy to be on. Yeah, it was great having you here for the was Indiana State game. And of course, uh, getting into the Indiana Football Hall of Fame. Uh, a lot of fun in your role with the National Football Foundation. You're a Hall of Famer and, and your career speaks for itself at the age of 40 but to talk about that as you reflect on a birthday birthdays are always days for reflection certainly but as you look back at that i mean how do you, can you can you put this it's probably hard to put it in, in one little capsule but you look at that football career and all that it's meant to you uh, have a your 40 year old eyes and ears on that how, how do you perceive it yeah just uh so lucky and blessed to uh uh really just to be a part of uh, a lot of great games and a lot of great competition and to be able to compete against some of the, you know, best football players in the world. And, uh, you know, as you look back to realize how lucky you are um, to be able to make it all the way through your career and not, not have a major injury that really, you know, takes you out. And, you know, all the, all the times I remember talking to my dad about the struggles and, oh man, I don't think I'm ever going to make it and never going to make it to where I want to be. And, you know, his, his guiding hand and his steady hand and, you know, kind of just full circle now, hope I can be that steady hand for my son and daughter and, and uh, you know, and whenever they're uh, going to do for their pursuits in their life. And I just want to be that, you know, steady voice for them and tell them to play the long game like my dad did and, uh, you know, always be there for them. You know, your son, I got to meet your son in the press box for the Indiana State game when, when you were in town uh what was that experience like just coming back and being the kind of the 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 celebrity of the moment well deserved based on your career but uh what, what was that experience like for you coming back a few weeks ago yeah it was very special and uh son and daughter both had a great time Purdue treated my family unbelievably and uh, we got a lot of great memories from that trip back and uh some great pictures to go along with it so we had we had a lot of fun, but uh, yeah, definitely an eye-opening experience for my son in particular. Uh, you know, he really just sees me as the flag football coach and, uh, you know, being back here in Iowa, you don't really, uh, you get recognized a little bit, but you can you can kind of fall underneath the radar a little bit too, so that's good. And uh, he uh, he certainly had a lot of questions on why people wanted so many pictures and autographs and, <laughs> and all of that stuff. So uh, it was it was fun to be there with him. Who is this guy is what they was thinking. Yeah, you know, what the heck? All right, you're 40. Can you, Tom Brady still playing is just an amazing, and even Drew Brees and even all, all of that, those guys that are playing over 40, an amazing feat. I'm not saying it's all, you know, every, to each his own. And you made a conscious decision to say, I, I think I've had enough. Uh, talk about that and just the fact that the amazing thing that Brady and Breeze did in his time, but also your decision as you as you called it into to your career a few years back. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think uh, you know, in this new age of football, it's probably not as much of a physical accomplishment. You know, I mean, playing the position that we play, they uh, you know, they keep you healthy. They don't let you get hit all that you know yeah. all that much anymore. And uh, you know, you can play a game to really kind of to stay out of harm's way at that position. But uh, you know, it's more of a mental feat and and uh you know i guess you really have to love that grind because uh you know the the time it takes to get ready the time it takes to lead the football team and you know just really the the year-round aspect of the position uh you know it's uh you know like you said to each his own and and that certainly wasn't wasn't for me but to, to watch yeah. some of these guys that you know they were old when i when i was starting into the league <laughs> it seems like you know he tom had to be uh 
you know, a veteran by the time I was a rookie already, you know? So, uh, yeah. um, it's, uh, it's, uh, fun to watch them play and, and also fun to watch some of the new blood come in and, and all the great things that some of these new quarterbacks do as well. All right. When you look, reflect also, uh, on, on Purdue and in, in those days, you had so many great moments and you had, the 2003 season where you really made a run at the big 10 championship 2000 you went to bowl games every year that you were there again another hard another hard thing to put into to uh, you know into one or two moments but talk about the things that really sustain you the most about your career at, at purdue yeah really uh probably just going back to you know my dad and the and the you know just the great um mentors that I had uh, in coach Chiller and coach Cheney and my dad and my, my high school football coach, Kent Horseman was always a, yeah. you know, phone call away. Uh, you know, because you always go through tough times. You're, I remember being homesick uh, my freshman year and Brandon Hans was starting over me. And, yeah. and I thought, boy, there's no way I'll ever make it onto the field. I want to go home. I want to go home. And, you know, my dad telling me you can't come home, you know, you're there, you're, you're, you're staying, you know, there's, you're not going anywhere. And uh, just to play the long game, keep your mouth shut, work hard, uh, be a leader, you know, work harder than everybody else and everything will work out. And, uh, you know, a, a, as you're getting told that as a 20 year old kid, 21 year old kid, you know, it's hard to hard to always believe it. But, uh, you know, looking back, you know, uh, 99 percent of the time he was right. All right. Sense of humor was a big part of Joe Tiller's life. I don't know if he was always humorous around you, but you had, I think, good, good conversations. But that that bond between uh, uh, the coach and, and his his standout star quarterback. Uh, talk about that and that special relationship that the two of you had. Yeah, it was special. Uh, uh, you know, I was blessed to have great coaches starting from high school and and yeah. And uh, going all the way up, I, I, I had some great coaches in the NFL, but certainly the relationship I look back on the most is, uh, you know, the one with Coach Tiller and uh, just his, um, you know, he really took me underneath his wing and, and uh, you know, I felt that. I felt it the whole time I was there and um, never felt the pressure, you know, never. The, the thing that I loved about that coaching staff was, you know, we did play in a lot of big games and uh, had some great seasons, but uh whether you were playing on um, ESPN game day or you were playing a, you know, non-conference, you know, kind of nothing game to begin with. Um, first and foremost, they wanted to have fun. They wanted to keep the pressure off the kids and, uh, you know, let those kids be, you know, 21, 22 year old kids. And, you know, I, I certainly uh, appreciate that and appreciate the fact that I was able to have a fun, you know, college football amateur uh, experience and, and, uh, you know, I certainly hope that kids nowadays get to have that same chance. Even with your one experience and obviously the Wisconsin game and the and 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 being so close to getting that done. What what is that takeaway now for you and maybe for what if you get a chance to talk about that with your kids about that experience of being at the very high, having a low, but coming back and finishing your career in a strong note? I mean, what what's the takeaway there from that? Well, you just got to be in the dance, you know, you got to be willing yeah. to put yourself out there and, and put it all on the line. And when you compete against great people and you compete against the best players, you know, it does not work out all the time, but, uh, yeah. I'm happy that I was able to put myself out there and put it on the line. And I think I got a bunch of teammates that would echo those same, you know, same thoughts about me that, you know, I was a hard worker and did it for the team and didn't really have a whole lot of, uh, you know, personal, uh, things that, you know, kind of, uh, detracted from what the team was going to try to do. So that's what I tried to tried to be. And uh, that's what I'll try to teach my kids. Yeah, that's come off so well. I think you're when you was uh, in the times that you've been involved with the National Football Foundation and kind of a, in a selfless way of just saying, hey, I'm going to be be part and be there to help. And uh, I know from the Purdue football community that is greatly appreciated. OK, do you have any special birthday plans? You got busy with kids this afternoon and, and, and family. But is there something that uh, is a is a Kyle Orton birthday special on that 40th birthday? Absolutely. My mom cooks uh, fried chicken and mashed potatoes and some white gravy ah. every birthday. So they, they're coming over here at about six. And I'm sure I got about an hour of football with my son before that. He uh, he comes home and and uh, he is ready to go. So uh, we'll, we'll be a little bit busy before dinner, but cannot wait for my mom's own cooking. Ah, awesome. OK, last question on Purdue. Purdue's got a lot of excitement ahead of it. 
two more wins and it's going to do no worse than tie for the West division. Now, whether the represent will, will remains to be seen. All right. If you're in that locker room before they play Northwestern on Saturday, what do you tell them? Same thing every week. You can't worry about two <laughs> weeks from now. You got to worry about today. You got to be worried about practice coming up here in a little bit. And you got to, uh, you know, just take care of your business day to day and, and let all this, let all the other stuff work itself out. But it seems like uh, they're hitting their stride kind of at the right time. And, and uh, you know, hopefully they can finish the season strong and take that right into a good bowl game. Yeah, number 16 reminds me of number 18 in his day. Aiden O'Connell has been a really, really an amazing story. Yeah, anytime you got a good quarterback like that, you've always got a chance. And he's accurate with the football. He's a smart kid. And, and uh, I'm sure he'll make some big plays down the stretch here to, to set him up. All right. We're going to let you get off to your family duties and coaching duties, et cetera. Thanks so much for taking the time today. We wish you the best in, on the big 4-0 and uh, look forward to seeing you uh, early and often uh, around uh, Ross Age Stadium for years to come. So have a great birthday and best to you and your family, Kyle. Thanks for having me back on.